Chapter 1 Surrettsville, Maryland, April 1854 My children need a better life than this. Look at you. You're unfit to be a husband or a father. Ma's wailing disrupted Johnny's sleep and jolted him wide awake. Oh no, not another ruckus in an in paws stomping off and Ma sobbing. He pulled the covers over his head. How can a helpless woman like me save their young minds and souls? Ma's pleas reached Johnny's ears. He trembled, struck with panic. My soul needs to be saved? As these horrifying words echoed in his mind, Johnny slid out of bed and crept to the top step, pressing his forehead against the banister railings. If Ma couldn't save his soul, he needed someone who could. Some parishioners get a good Catholic education for their children, but they have their husband's support, which I sorely lack. Ma groused, her back to Johnny. He pictured a bitter tear running down her cheek. Poor Ma wept a lot these days. His heart ached for her. He longed to comfort her, but didn't dare go to her aid and endure Pa's wrath. God bless my noble undertaking. Oh, give it up, woman. Pa flung a cheroot to the floor and pounded it out. There's good enough schools without papist teachings. John, you are a blasphemer. Ma sometimes used words Johnny or Pa didn't understand. Worse than a misguided Protestant, you're a complete non-believer. Pa flipped his hand as if to smack Ma. You knew I wasn't a mackerel snapper when we married. At least I let you baptize Isaac and Anna. Yes, her voice lowered, defeated. I am like the Eugenia of old. Her name epitomizes my own life. I would convert my family to the faith of the Holy Mother Church. Christ! Pa kicked a chair. It crashed and splintered against the wall. I even let you baptize my bastard son. Another family sore point that brought shame and ridicule upon the Surratts especially in church, under nasty glares. Pa shouldn't have brought it up. Johnny's half-brother was named John William Harrison by his mother, Caroline Sanderson, who signed the legal papers Caroline Sarath in a misspelled attempt to lay the blame where it belonged. In response to Miss Sanderson's plea, the county court adjudged Pa responsible for the boy's upkeep. Fine wedding present that was, sir, Ma's voice quivered, a sure sign she was about to weep. Four months after our wedding, and me already in the family way with Isaac. Well, I done let you do it. Pa took a swig from his bottle. It wasn't his fault his father was irresponsible, Ma shot back. I gave you my gracious acceptance of your affair. You are cruel, John. Too cruel. Ah, cruel? Pa rasped. And what about you? He slurred his speech. Johnny grimaced in disgust. Once again, Pa's lushy. You ought to let well enough alone, Mary. You needs learn to lead things be. Hells, bells, you're in such a hurry to convert the world. You sold your own salvation by violating the seventh commandment with a priest of all people. Ma raised and lowered her hands. Shh, not so loud, lest the children hear. But Johnny had already heard. Although he didn't get the full meaning of sold salvation and the seventh commandment, what was that? Bah. Little damn late for that, ain't it? Pa's voice receded as he turned his back on her. They heard it. It's rumored all over the county. Only because you cannot keep your inebriated trap 